This week we're looking at um, this series that we started. Uh, it's entitled Furnace Faith. And the first one in that series is appropriately the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as they are confronted with the uh, punishment, if you will, of the fiery furnace because they would not surrender and worship this golden statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up for everyone to worship. Now, as we dive into that, this, it's found in chapter 3 of the book of Daniel. As we dive into this today, I told you we would dig a little more into Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and this experience that they had. What you have, uh, what most, well, I won't say most, but a lot of scholars believe uh, that this is a loyalty test that is given to all of these groups of people that are in leadership in the government. Many of them um, are foreigners, not just the Jewish people, but many because uh, the Babylonian Empire had conquered so many nations uh, in the Middle East. And their policy was to... Um, their policy of assimilation was to let them rule over certain areas uh, of their people. And there was a, an assassination attempt on Nebuchadnezzar about 10 years after the event of the dream, the vision that is recorded in chapter 2. And some feel like that this may be um, a test of loyalty, this statue that was built to see who would be faithful to, to recognize his authority, his power, and so forth, because uh, Babylonian kings did not have this sense of being deity. Uh, you do see some of that in Rome. Uh, you just don't see it in Babylon. Uh, so it is doubtful that this image is an image of him unless it is a loyalty test. But religion and Fealty to the state, faithfulness to the state, they kind of blend into one another, and it's hard. You're worshiping the state. You're worshiping its powers, authority, which, of course, is represented by the king himself. And so you're, you're pledging allegiance to that as well, and nothing else is more important, and everything else belongs to this and so forth. Now, most people wouldn't have a problem with that because they were polytheistic. Well, just one more deity among the others doesn't really matter. I can do that. Fine, dandy. Problem for the Jewish people, however, especially these three that are being singled out, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, as, as the story opens up, as, we, as it begins, it just begins with, and it's at least maybe nine to ten years after chapter two that chapter three takes place. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, the height of which, as we said yesterday, was 90 feet tall, nine feet wide. And he set up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon, which is the southeast area. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent word to assemble the satraps. Listen to this list of officials. Satraps, prefects, the governors, counselors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the rulers of the provinces. If I have missed anybody, all the other rulers of the province. To come to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and the rulers of the provinces were assembled for the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now, that's, that's some comedy that's going on there. The, the, Daniel, in writing this, is, is talking about uh, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. He's going over the whole thing. That, and it is comical to see this list run off like that. So there is some comedy involved. And it's very, very uh, pretentious, uh, in your face. Oh, we are officials and, and all of this, and we're brought here, and we're going we're gonna to worship this. And dedicate the dedication. You'll fall down and worship at this dedication ceremony of this, of this uh, statue. Uh, that, and I do agree. I do believe that religion blends into it, but I think primarily it is a, a, a pledge of allegiance, which, by the way, it's pretty much what the worship of the emperor was. It was to pledge allegiance to the emperor. And if you know Jewish history, you know that, that in, in, when Rome conquered uh, Judea and it came under Roman control, the Jewish people just would not, they simply would not do obeisance 
take the Pledge of Allegiance to the form of the emperor. They would rather die, and they did, which led to this, uh, oh, well, I, I can't think of the word. It, it led the, the Roman uh, authorities to allow the Jewish people to have their own religion. They were given special dispensation. You know, you can worship your religion. If only you remember to pray for the emperor during the daily sacrifices. Okay, cool, we'll do that. So that's what they did. And when Israel was undergoing that persecution under Rome and dying because they would not sacrifice to the emperor and uh, bow before his image, and same with uh, Antiochus Epiphanes uh, III, which is going to play uh, historically with Daniel, uh, when they were facing this in the intertestamental period, the Jewish people drew upon stories, especially like this one, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and how they were faithful to God and God was faithful to them. Their faith and faithfulness uh, was demonstrated. And so uh, very important in the history of Israel uh, is this particular story. And so the pretentiousness of the all of these officials in the court, all of that, uh, is saying that's nothing. Your title is nothing. What is important is God himself. So we take up the story again. You've got all of this pretentious stuff. And the herald announces, when well, they're all gathered there, in verse 4, Then the herald loudly proclaimed to, the, to you the command is given, O peoples, nations, and men of every language. Okay, these aren't just um, Babylonians. These are, they, there are other nations, other peoples that are involved in this worship. At the moment you hear the sound of, here we get another big long list, horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you are fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And so there's this orchestra that is set up. This is a very uh, big dedication. It's a big ceremony. You've got all of these officials, both foreign and, and home-born, that are there and are collected together. And uh, you've got all of this great orchestra that is out here. We don't even know what these instruments are. All of these great uh, ornaments are here. This or uh, ornaments, this orchestra, is gathered together here, and they're going to have this big ceremony. And when I read that, when I think on it, I think about um, the things in Nazi Germany when uh, Adolf Hitler would have these great demonstrations at night and they'd have the lights and the and the music and and the marching and the banners and the colors and the flames and the torches and all of that and they're all in synchrony and marching and this kind of thing very dramatic that's the idea behind this very dramatic you have the orchestra that's playing all of this music and you have the statues center stage there you have all of these officials that are gathered there and are being announced to them that they are to fall down and worship this dedication of this image. And, you know, I do happen to think that the image is, it should represent Nebuchadnezzar because I think it's related to this dream that he had. And I'm number one, I'm the, I'm the top of the totem pole, uh, that the vision that he had, this golden, uh, he was the golden head of the statue. And, and, of course, I think that went to his head somewhat. Obviously, uh, he's got an ego problem, as we'll see in just a little while. And so you have all of this drama built up around this thing, and the orchestra begins to play, and everybody bows down, except everybody doesn't. And that's the problem. So you're supposed to bow down, but whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. They, well, they had brick kilns that were there. And I'm sure they were in sight, uh, I'm sure that they could see the fire coming up and the smoke coming out of these brick kilns because the buildings that they used in Babylon were made out of these bricks um, that they did out of clay, and they would fire them in the brick kiln. And they could be on a normal, be around 1,000 degrees, and so these things are going to be heated up hotter than that. Anyway, whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast in the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, at that time, when all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, trigon, psaltery, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, nations, and the men of every language fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. But they didn't all do that. Now, if this next part hadn't happened, Nebuchadnezzar would have never known. 
nobody would have ever reported it. He couldn't see it. He's up at the palace. And if you look down on the plain of Dura, uh, and Dura is a word that means a walled area, uh, it, they believe that there are several that are mentioned um, in the uh, Babylonian uh, papers, uh, official documents. Uh, but the, there's one in the southeast that's believed this one because it's the closest one to the capital. Anyway, for this reason, at that time, certain uh, Chaldeans came forward and brought charges against the Jews. They responded and said to Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar the king, listen to this, listen to what they say. O king, live forever. You, O king, have made it. You did this. You, O king, made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, and bagpipe, and all kinds of music is to fall down and worship the golden image. Yep, 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 I did that. I can see the king. Yeah, I did that. I made that decree. Yeah, what about it? Whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast in the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. Yeah, I remember that. That's, that's the penalty. I said that would, that would be the penalty. What's the problem? What's the problem? Here's the problem. There are certain Jews, catch this, listen to how many times he's, that, they, uh, that they attack his vanity, that they attack or, or that they use his vanity against him and his ego and his pride. Listen to this. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the province of Babylon. You did this. Namely, these fellows, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O oh king, have disregarded you, disrespected you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. My goodness gracious. People haven't changed, have they? These guys are jealous. These guys, and they're not hiding it very well. These guys are tattletailing on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because... Uh, they, because of their rapid advancement in government, and they're over them. And so that's not setting well. It hadn't been setting well, and you know, they would sit around at their meetings as they were drinking their Diet Pepsi, eating Skittles or potato chips or whatever. And then they're sitting there and they're saying, you know what? I don't like those Jewish people. I don't like the, what King uh, Nebuchadnezzar has done. I can't stand them. And a first chance I get, whoo, I, whoo, I'm going to take them. Mm, I'm going to get them. Oh, I'm going to get them. And, this, and they did. And we'll see this show up again later. Now, is there some racism involved here? Absolutely. Is there some eth ethnic problems here? Absolutely. That is there. That's in the heart of human beings. You know, the, the idea, and, and where does that come from? Well, it comes from the enemy. It comes from Satan himself. Uh, God has created a good creation, and sin has corrupted it. The dark powers, satanic forces, uh, have uh, corrupted it and are continually operating to destroy God's good creation, and especially human beings. And so that activity, that jealousy, that anger, that, that bitterness over somebody else being advanced, that doesn't come from God. That comes from the enemy. That comes from... Oh, my ego's been hurt. Oh, I'm my pride has been stomped on. Uh, I'm they're not better than me. Uh, nobody said they're better than you. They just have a different position than you. Uh, it wasn't their choice to make, was it? No, it wasn't. It was, it was Nebuchadnezzar's, and that's the choice that he made. He had raised him up to this position, but they're appealing to his vanity. They're appealing to his pride, his position, his prestige. All of this reminding him, you know that law you made? You know that statue you built? You remember you said that we were supposed to worship it? You remember you said what was going to happen if people didn't? Well, if I got news for you, King, those guys, those guys that you're so fond of that you think are so wonderful, they wouldn't even pledge allegiance to you. They wouldn't even support you. They abandoned, they disrespected and disregarded you completely. They don't care anything about you. We're faithful. And we're tattletailing on them because we love you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, that's what's going on. Now, let me tell you something. If you live out the Christian life, if you live that out in the day and age in which we live, there will be those who try to force you into this kind of situation where you're going to be punished. If you will not play the game like they say to play the game, then they will try to eliminate you. They will try to get rid of you. It, it, it's like uh, we've talked about this before. In the age in which we live today, 
to disagree with someone is to disrespect and disregard them as a person. We can't just disagree. We can't disagree about the form of government. We can't disagree about how goals should be set or how they should be reached. We can't agree on that the police are good. We can't agree on that all lives matter. We can't agree on any of that. We have to, and if you don't agree with me, then you must be eliminated. That's what's going on here. And these three have got to go. They're not towing the party line. They're not following everybody else. And in fact, they're standing up and saying, we can't do that. Well, we're not going to have that. Now, it's not that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had declared that they didn't support the king, had not, had not illustrated that they were bad citizens. In fact, they're carrying out their functions as dignitaries over the, the provinces of Babylon and are evidently, by all accounts, doing well and um, supporting the king. They just won't participate in this. And that's the thing that sticks in these um, opponents' craw, so to speak is that they are doing well, is that they are being blessed, obviously, and the king's favor is upon them, and that just will not do. So they've got to be eliminated. That's godlessness, and that's what happens in government when godlessness reigns, is that we must eliminate those. That's why I think this election that we're going to have in November is so very, very important. They, well, I don't like to get into politics. Do your due diligence as, as a citizen of the United States and as a Christian and a citizen of heaven, do your due diligence and study this and be prepared to vote because uh, it's important. All right, so this is what happens. Then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and anger gave orders to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then these men were brought before the king and that's where we're going to end it. But the fact of the matter is Whenever you go against godless government, you will run into trouble. Whenever you live for Jesus Christ, you will run into opposition. You will run into those who want to eliminate you. The age in which we live is a God-denying age. It's an age that says it's okay if you believe in God as long as you don't live it out, as long as you don't live it out in public, and as long as you don't confront anything that we want to do or anything that we want to accomplish with God's word and say that there is any kind of judgment over us because we are the measure of all things. Whenever we do that, I can remember Dr. Rogers, Dr. Adrian Rogers down at Bellevue were telling us this when we were spending time with him, telling us preacher boys this uh, at that time, um, that if you are living for Jesus Christ and you don't run into the devil at some point, chances are the reason you're not running into him is because you're running with him. And so we cannot run with godless government or godless people. We will come into conflict with them. There is no doubt about it. We are to love them. Uh, we are to love the people. Uh, we are to be in the world, but not of the world, as Paul says. Uh, and when that happens, you're going to come into direct conflict uh, with these godless powers. And when we do, the question will be, as it was for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, are you going to bow down or face the consequences? That becomes the question for us today as well. Are we going to bow down or are we going to face the consequences? Now, I happen to believe that there's a lot of stuff going on that's not constitutional. I happen to believe that governors of certain states are grabbing for power and they're using the virus as a means to do so. Uh, and I think this is a precursor of what we're going to be faced with when you're getting ready for revelation to take place. Before, the, before Jesus raptures the church, what takes place in revelation doesn't happen in a vacuum. There is a buildup to that. I think we're seeing that what it looks like, what it could be like as that buildup takes place. Does it ever shock you how quickly Government took control of things, how quickly governors took control of states and were enacting powers based on people's fear, based on people's uh, anxieties and worries, and they capitalized on that and secured their positions. Think about it. That's what it will be like uh, as Revelation gets started. 
I'm thankful that the church won't be here. We're raptured out of that. But we're living in an age which may be seeing the setup for Revelation to take place on God's timetable. Well, just understand that unless a revival takes place in these United States, you and I will more and more and more face pressure to conform to the image of the world rather than to be um, transformed into the image that Jesus wants us to bear, the image of God. And so I pray for our nation. I hope that you pray for our nation as well. Well, we'll find out tomorrow what happens with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego um, when they come before the king. We'll look at that. Hey, listen, I love you. More importantly, God loves you. And he gave his son, Jesus Christ. You might have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and even in the midst of what we're living in, joy indescribable. I pray that you know that. Hey, listen, until tomorrow, God bless you.